Good validation can be the difference between a good user experience and a terrible user experience. So in this video, let's walk through 10 tips to improve validation in your forms. All right, so I'm starting with a basic form here. Now this is inside of a project that is an Astro project, but it has Svelte components inside of it so that we can do some JavaScript. So we're gonna start on this form that has no validation at all. And to start, we're gonna talk about some built-in things with HTML, and then we'll add on JavaScript to add some more dynamic things later on. Now, the first thing we wanna do is make sure that for our different inputs, we are using the appropriate input type. So an example of this is for the password. You can see that this is not blanking out what I'm typing. And another thing is I could type in whatever I want in this email. And then if I submit this, it's actually going to let me submit it because it's not taking built-in validation from the browser. So for these, we can go and update each one of these to make sure it's using the appropriate type. So username should be of type text. And then we get down, down to email. This should be of type email. The confirm email will be the same thing. And then lastly, we'll have the password type. So let's see exactly what this does. Well, for the password, we'll notice that this is now uh, obscuring what the characters are that are being typed, which is what we want. And then also, if we were to type in something and press submit for the email, if it's not a valid email address, the browser is going to pop up and tell us that that's the case. So we already have a lot of built-in validation that happens just by using the right type for each of our inputs. Now, in addition to types, we also have some built-in validators that we can use as HTML properties to leverage as well. So let's go and see what that might look like. Let's say for our username, we wanna make sure that the username is actually uh, valid or has something in it. Well, we can first mark this as required. Now, if we try to submit our form, it's gonna look here, it's gonna know that this is required and the browser is now gonna tell us this field is required and not let the user actually complete the submission of this project. Let's say not only do we want it to be required, we also want it to have a min length of five characters. So if we save this and now refresh, if we submit, we still see that we have to fill out this form, but if we do one, two, three, we also get additional text to say that this has to be at least five characters or more, and we only have three currently. So now we have the ability to add in four and five, and now we should have a valid username while we still have to fill out the email appropriately because of the validators there. Now we can take this one step further by using a pattern or a regex pattern to be able to compare with our username, for example. So let's say we want our username to have a min length of five, and then we want to give it a pattern that says it must require that it has a number of zero through nine. Now in this case, I'm not gonna give a deep dive into regex, one, because I'm not that comfortable with it, and two, because that's not the point of this video. But these are basically our ability to define patterns that this input should match. And you can get really deep and complex with these patterns, but we'll keep this relatively simple to say that this username should include a number. So now if we say, James Q quick, this should pop up and say that it doesn't match the pattern that we've requested. So it's making sure that the user knows that it should match a certain pattern. But we now have an issue where this pattern is very vague. It doesn't really tell us what the specific pattern is or what the requirements are. So the next tip is to be able to define a custom tooltip validation message by using the title property. So in the title property, we can now customize what that message is that the browser is going to show to the user. So in this case, we can say username must be five characters and include a number. So we save this, we come back and we type in James Q quick and we try to submit. We now get that specialized piece of text or customized piece of text that we have written so that the user has a better idea of what exactly we are looking for from them. All right, so those are a few of the things to make sure you're doing on the HTML side or you can take advantage of on the HTML side. Let's move over to an example that actually uses JavaScript and let's talk about a few things that we do here. So our first tip, if we're handling validation ourselves in JavaScript is to not validate the input until it has actually been changed and the user tabs away from that input. And what I mean is if I start to type in this username and start to type, notice it's already giving me an error message before I've even finished typing what I'm trying to type. Instead, what we should do is just wait until the user actually tabs away from that input to the next one or unfocuses away from the username property before we actually show that validation message. So the way we can do that is instead of using the input event handler, we can use the change event handler. And this takes care of this for us. So if we refresh this and start to type James Q quick, notice we're not getting those validation messages until we actually tab away. Now it says it must be six characters long. And then if we 
tab away again, it now tells us that it should contain a number. So this is a much better experience than throwing the error in the user's face before they've even had a chance to fully type in their username. Now the next tip may be pretty obvious, but it's to give very specific validation messages for each individual input. So notice again that as I type in an input in tab away, it's giving me a very specific message that this should be at least six characters long. And then when I don't meet the other requirement of having a number, it gives me a specific message for that as well. Now, in addition to that, we have messages for email and then we have a confirmation email validation message as well that clarifies that this property and the one above it should match each other. So sometimes you'll see very generic messages at the top of a form that just say there are errors, go and fill them out. That's not very helpful. We want to give the user a big indicator as to where the errors are and specifically what those errors are. Now, another tip is to highlight the box in red to make it even more obvious. So let's say the user is filling out a really big form. This red color is going to jump out to them. And this is kind of a universal expectation of bad or error being red. So these colors, along with the messages, are good callouts for specifically where the errors are and what they are. Now, the next tip is to have static heights for your validation messages. What does that mean? Well, let's say I get rid of my static height that I do have, and I now try to type in a username, pay close attention to the email and the confirm email when it shows me this validation message. So as I tab away, it moves the rest of the pieces down. Actually, it expands this form because it's now giving more room for this val validation message to live. Now, in my case, I typically just give these a default height. I'm using Tailwind in this case, so I'm adding a class of H4, which gives it a specific height where it already takes up that amount of space. And so now if I refresh and tab away, notice the rest of the elements don't jump because this thing already has a height, even if it doesn't have text inside of it. So I think this is a lot cleaner than having the validation message pop up and everything below it than moving around. Now, an additional thing that you may have picked up on, but we should talk about specifically, is to make sure that you're getting rid of the error message as the user then meets certain requirements. So this is telling me it should be six characters long. I tab away, it should, says it should have a number. I tab away, notice that message disappears. So in the username change handler, I check up here, I set the username error if it's not long enough. I set the error if it doesn't contain a number. And then I set the error to an empty string if it passes both of those checks to indicate that this input is valid. We now then conditionally use the username error to display the border red, and then we use that to display the username error here. So if there's no error, it just displays empty text. Otherwise, it's going to have the border up here and display the actual error. So for any of these, as I tab away and come back, it's going to actually correct to indicate to the user that the input is now valid based on their requirements. Now, the very last tip I have for you is the fact that you can do all the validation that you want to on the front end, but your true validation has to happen on the back end. And that's because people could go in and tamper with your forms, or they could open something like Postman and they could send a new HTTP request to whatever your browser endpoint is and be able to bypass all of your validation that was on the front end. So they could come into here and send a post request they can mark a body, they could have form data, they could add in all the different properties that they want, they could leave username empty, they could add email that is an in valid email, etc. And they can submit that. And if you don't have logic on your server to prevent that, you are going to be in trouble because they've now bypassed all of your validation on the front end. I like to consider front end validation user experience and true validation to be what happens on the server. Now, if you're interested in learning more about this, I did a full video on fully validating on the server that dives deeper into all the different use cases that I just talked about. So you can check out that video to learn more. In the meantime, let me know what other tips you have for doing form validation that have worked for you. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.